Hi, and welcome to The Dig, where for the next 12 months we cover 12 archaeological sites. And then each day we feature an artifact from that site on our Instagram account. You can follow us at AITC underscore DC. Today, we're looking at Fort Shirley, which is a frontier defense site. It was built in 1756. Come with us as we dig into archaeology. My name is Dr. Jonathan Burns. I am a professor at Juniata College in Penn State. I'm also the Penn State field instructor for the Fort Shirley site. So I'm the principal investigator. Well, about uh, five years ago, prior to starting any excavations here, we knew that there was a site located in Huntington County. I was teaching at these two colleges and universities, so they were nearby. So we knew that there was a site here and uh, Penn State was looking for a new field school location. We figured that since this has historic documentation and is a fairly well-known site and had the potential to be large and work well as a field school, that we would target this. Um, and there was a lot of local interest in it, a lot of assistance with trying to find old documentation and trying to follow the paper trail um, to kind of put this together to the point where we could feel confident enough to start looking for the fort. We are on the north end of Shirleysburg, uh, which is a little town in south central Huntington County. Uh, we're located along Route 522 or the Crow and Pike and uh, this would have been the frontier during the mid-1700s in Pennsylvania. Uh, the Fort Shirley site is located on this nice flat hill overlooking uh, the Alwick Creek. Um, we have fairly shallow archaeological deposits and a plow zone. We don't have to dig very deep to get to colonial era items um, and also we kind of have uh, a smattering of prehistoric sites all the way across here as well. So as we're trying to pick out the fort related items, we still have kind of a background noise of thousands of years of prehistory. Dr. Burns, can you give us a tour of the Fort Shirley site? I'd be delighted to. Uh, the Fort Shirley site was a palisade fort constructed in 1755 by George Crowen. He already had a trading post here. Um, but when he realized that after the Fort Necessity debacle and uh, General Braddock's defeat in western Pennsylvania, this area needed to be fortified because all of his trading goods and pack teams and everything was kind of in this position. So in order to fortify this, he uh, instructed his group to dig a, a long linear trench around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. So a palisade fort is set in, is logs set into a trench, basically, and then tied together. Uh, to protect the people inside. It would not stand up to cannon fire. It would mainly be to protect you against small arms fire. And forts of this era were typically utilized to protect your gear and also your officers. Um, and then you would have personnel and soldiers camped out around the perimeter of it. So we've basically found all four sides of the fort and we're working on uncovering all four defensive corners or bastions. So if you look right here, you can see one of the sections of Palisade Trench running in a linear fashion. Um, it's diverted its course from the southern wall to kind of angle out and wrap around whatever stood in the corner, in the southeast corner of the fort here. It could have been a, a blockhouse or some other sort of defensive structure. So you can see how this runs right into a rock wall and a foundation. Um, initially we were excited and thought that this could be a fort era building. Um, what we're realizing now with a little bit of um, archaeology and also digging in the written documents that there was likely an early potter on this spot, an early earthenware potter about 1824 or 1825. So we're finding lots of ceramic uh, wasters, um, kiln furniture, things that you would expect to go with that. But what we still were able to determine is that our linear palisade trench feature runs under this building and you can see we caught it a little bit here in this test unit. It runs diagonally through this one, and then we caught it again over here in this unit. You can see the staining with little bits of brick and uh, charcoal flecking. So that's how we know we've identified it or that we're positioned right over the palisade. So we're expecting to chase this the rest of the way out where it's going to blunt out or end in a, in a tip or an enclosure and then it's gonna come back towards the Eastern Palisade Wall. So if we head up this way, we'll be walking along the Eastern Palisade Wall 
And this is where we first discovered um, the initial post from year one of excavations. Every time we find the palisade along a straight stretch, we typically have three uh, large wooden upright posts mm -hmm. or stains in there to recover. Okay. So uh, in this case, you can see that um, there's old depressions here from our other test units. We've determined that the Fort Palisade wall definitely runs all the way along here. And you can see it's opened up here to the point where you can see this is what the trench would have looked like that they dug in the fall of 1755. And you can even see impressions of where the logs would have been standing. And so I, just to make sure I understand, these are where the post holes or the logs would have been for yep. the actual palisade wall. Yep. Okay. Massive logs would have been stood upright um, and then continued maybe another 16 feet up out of the ground. So they would be a protected, protective kind of barrier and then it would be pinned together with a ledger board at the top. So this is a highly identifiable feature. When we find it, you know, it dives very deep and we have these posts in it almost every time. So the settlers that were coming here after the fort era might have been stealing some of the posts to build other structures. So sometimes we find wooden posts or nubs and sometimes we find that they've been robbed and pulled out. Uh, as a French and Indian War fort site, this is a very unique site in that it started out as a trading post um, first established by George Crowen, who was the most prominent trader in Pennsylvania, who did basically the first land deals and also greased the wheels of trade uh, for the province of Pennsylvania um, all the way out to the Ohio country. Um, it's unique because we had Native Americans uh, living in a refugee village next to this fort, and there's good evidence that they assisted in fortifying the location as well as were allowed to pass freely inside the gate. Um, typically on a French and Indian War fort site you don't have that kind of culture uh, connection or kind of culture inter interwoven connection between um, colonists and Native Americans. So it's extremely special in that respect uh, because George Crowan was just one pivotal figure and these Native Americans were the ones who actually uh, were instrumental in starting the French and Indian War. So um, we had a lot of kind of famous people, if you will, uh, historically famous folks that would have been either on site here, known about this location, or came here to, to counsel about it or talk about uh, the French and Indian War at the onset of the conflict. Um, my emotional uh, attachment to this site is I am a local. I only live about 30 miles away. Um, so I've always been interested in the colonial history of this area. Um, and it is, uh, you know, it's, we're fortunate to have such a local site that can actually um, give us such a clear picture of colonial lifeways and the interaction between Native Americans, these trader, traders, colonial traders, as well as provincial uh, military personnel. Here we are in the northeast corner of the Palisade Fort. We've just opened one more test unit to get back on track. Uh, previous years, we've excavated a larger block uh, behind these folks here where we found not a uh, vertical post, but a horizontal um, lentil log feature. So we know that there was probably some sort of structure here in this corner. This was likely George Crowen's trading post or his initial cabin before the fort was even thought up. So this would have been one of the main buildings that once they fortify, they would have used this to kind of project their walls out from because he wanted to project, project out to be able to protect the buildings, essentially. Well, uh, when I started this site about five years ago, I was a rock shelter excavator. So um, I was dealing with very tricky, complicated, prehistoric archeological sites. So moving into this, I've kind of found myself becoming the local fort expert um, not only working on this site, but also uh, several others um, in this county and south of us. Uh, so it's definitely changed my focus as far as a researcher. Um, we definitely are going to have, uh, we have so much data that we have a lot of, um, a large story to tell. Lots of processing of the information. Um, so I have a feeling I'll be working with this site probably for the next five or so years, even if we stopped excavating you know, this season. Back in this corner, um, much like the southeast bastion corner, we're not quite sure what it looks like. So okay. we're at the point now where we need to trace this out again, 
and try to figure out its juxtaposition to whatever structure we've already determined existed here in the northeast corner. Um, as we turn to the left here and look across this kind of brow, this would be a nice defensive hilltop. Um, Fort Run is a stream running right below us, but it's a pretty good drop, almost 25 feet down to the bottom there. So this would make a natural defensive sort of bastion and north wall of the fort. So then whatever happens here is probably going to turn into a large projection and then we also have gotten back on our original palisade line. So we're basically just trying to close this shape with whatever it turns out to be. So we're still not sure what that's going to look at. The other two corners that I'm going to take you to uh, project out to almost like uh, large triangles with blunted ends, but we're not exactly sure how this one's going to look. Okay. So we can walk along the north wall then. Um, we're actually north of the palisade wall mm -hmm. uh, as we're approaching our water screening area over here. We're using 16th inch forensic recovery screens. Uh, that way we can find all those tiny little glass trade beads and other uh, microscopic items that wind up in the features. We basically, any feature fill will get screened through the water screens um, and that's where we're finding in situ artifacts, meaning that's where they were last lost in context. So we're recovering extremely small items um, along with the background noise of prehistoric ceramics and projectile points as well. Okay. Um, turning around to look south here, this region, uh, we put three test units in and determined that this is most likely the privy area. Very deep, rich deposits. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't continue to explore it because it was going to wind up being an artifact inventory nightmare. So we basically identified where the privy was, the north, uh, outside the north wall, um, and then we kind of shied away from it. What we wanted to do then was to continue to tri trace out this northwestern bastion, the next uh, defensive feature of the fort. So we picked it up right about the edge of the pasture and realized that it was angling off off of square from what our uh, the rectangular fort was looking like. So we basically tracked it all the way out to this kind of section of yard here and then it would have blunted off so the angle runs out here makes a little turn with about three posts and then returns back in to form the western wall okay. so we're basically looking at um, sort of like a star pattern or uh, a rectangle with projections that look kind of triangular and that would have had a building right in the center of that feature probably uh, as a lookout tower or a guardhouse Okay, this is the other corner of the fort where we spent most of last summer. Um, we were working on tracing our palisade line as it ran down here. We have the western wall, and then this projected out past uh, into this garden area, basically, um, and blunted out just a mere image of what we had in the northwest corner. So we have two very strong defensive um, bastionated corners, okay? And in these corners, um, like I said, there was a structure in that one. This one had a very large cooking feature in it, right about where that sandbox is, um, that was chock full of bone, faunal remains, wampum, various other artifacts uh, that keyed us in on the fact that we had a cooking feature for the fort. Um, we finished it off, uh, got both projections, got back online with our southern palisade wall. Uh, which cuts through the pasture here and goes all the way over to where those two students are still screening and excavating. So now you can see basically the size of the actual fort. There was never a battle here. Um, it was just created basically to protect the stores and the Native American refugees that were uh, living next to the site. We came all the way around the perimeter of the fort, so we're back here at the southeast corner but we're on the other side of this bush. Just to show you that we caught the southern palisade wall. You can see that linear, um, darker stain kind of approaching the center of this test unit complex, and then it turns. And that's what we wanted to find was uh, the projection as this thing goes around and continues to close off this corner. So if you look 
closely, you can see again the trench that was built to put the logs in, and then there's even a bit of a burned log still hanging out of that profile wall there that you can see. And typically, the wood can either be burnt to a crisp, and then there's some parts of it that's still actual uh, identifiable wood. Now, just for clarification, was the wood burnt on purpose, or was it did that happen in a later incident? They either burned the tips and the bottoms of the wood uh, to make it preserve longer, mm -hmm. or the settlers that came here after the fort site was occupied were just trying to get rid of these giant wooden posts, so they may have burned sections of them. Not every time do we find evidence of burning, but fairly frequently. Well, thank you for the tour. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much.